Good morning, Sonder fam. My name is Bailey Grady, and I will be your facilitator for our weekly setup today. Um, for those of you who may be new here with us, um, definitely share in the chat where you're dialing in from, one thing you're looking forward to next week. Um, and as we go through the content today, feel free to take screenshots or snap photos of what you see up on the screen. Um, we would also love it if you took pictures um, in your journal of like what you're actually doing with your setup. And then if you'll share that with us either in Sonder Club, which is our Silk and Sonder app, um, or you can always share on Instagram and TikTok and tag at Silk and Sonder. Um, real quick, I do want to run through a few housekeeping items. So first of all, speaking of sharing in the chat, make sure that that little blue box there next to where you type says everyone. If you don't move that over to everyone, it will probably say host and panelist. Um, and if it says host and panelists, the whole group will not be able to see what you have to share. So you definitely want to flip that over to everyone so everyone can see what you have to share. If you're on like your mobile device or a tablet or something, I know sometimes it'll pop back to host and panelists even after you change it to everyone. It's a weird little Zoom thing. So just be sure you keep an eye on that if you want to share with the group. Um, and with that said, we do have our community guidelines here that apply to all of our interactions and especially Saunders Socials. So please be kind and courteous to yourself and others today. No promotions or spam, please. Um, be sure to respect everyone's privacy here. No hate speech or bullying, of course. Um, limit repetitive product and accessory questions. If you want to know like what the best stickers are or the best pins or what everybody uses for certain things, Sonner Club is a great place to post those. Um, and then Jennifer is helping me out in the chat today. Um, she's going to hop on and wave hello if you can see her. Um, so she's going to be helping out in the chat, kind of keeping the conversation going. Um, also there to help answer any questions about what we're going over today. But Jennifer and I do not work with um, headquarters in the respect that like we can't look at where your journal is and shipping or take a look at like your subscription or anything like that. So anything that is going to need to go more towards their team will direct you to hello at Silk and Sonder and they'll be happy to help you first thing Monday. And then finally, Sonder Socials are a tool to help elevate your emotional health through the power of community, but you are responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. So it's always participate at your own comfort here. Um, if you're new, you'll notice like the only people that have the ability to turn cameras on are myself and Jennifer. So you don't have to worry about your camera suddenly hopping on or going on mute or anything. Um, everything is just done through the chat and you're welcome to participate as much or as little in that chat as you want. If you just want to kind of hang out, listen to the music and just spend time in your journal, that is totally great. Um, if you want to really be involved in the chat, maybe you've already done your journal setup, but you're just here to share ideas and like enjoy that community. That's awesome too. So whatever this time means for you, whatever, however, it's going to best suit you. That is exactly how we want you to spend it. So, and as always, Sometimes we can get a little deep here in Sonder Club. So if a certain prompt starts to bring up, really, I like to call them like crunchy, icky kind of feelings. And you're like, you know what? It's okay. I'm ready to sit with this. I'm ready to dive into this. That's awesome. We're here to like encourage and empower you. But if it starts to come up and it's the opposite feeling of like, ooh, I'm not ready for this today. I'm not going to, I'm not in a place to engage with this. That is fine too. It is always okay to take a break, to skip a section and do whatever feels best and right for you. So with that said, uh, here is our agenda. Um, so this is our last week with Tranquility. So we will do our Tranquility mind map, our last one for August. Um, we'll then do a rose bud thorn reflection exercise, do our weekly setup and close out. And then I know some of you may be joining us with your September journals. That's okay. We are still closing out the theme of August. Um, but when we dive into the weekly setup. We'll be sure to give you the page numbers for both um, the August journal and the September journal so that if you are joining us with September or if you're somebody that likes to go up and go ahead and set up both simultaneously, we'll give out those pages as well. But we will be still spending one last week with our theme of tranquility from August. Um, it's been a beautiful theme, I think, at least it has been for me. Um, in the very front of the journal on page two, Meha had this welcoming letter for us about tranquility. 
And she always does this fabulous letter every month through every theme that we have. So it's a great place to start in your journal each month when you get a new one. Um, but to call out a few things, tranquility will look different for everyone. Productivity and rest are two sides of the same coin, meaning like you can't be super productive if you're not also getting that rest that you need. Um, and then she invited us to think about what tranquility feels like for us and carve out space to indulge in some tranquility this month. So I hope that you have made time to do that this month. And if not, maybe this last little week of August, maybe you can squeeze some in there. Um, for me, I have focused a lot on like the five senses and how they correlate to the seven types of rest with tranquility. I've been sharing all month how my husband and I had a conversation uh, weeks ago about how, you know, people talk about how relaxing it is to go to the beach. And like, I wonder why that is. Why is that such a, you know, it seems to really be a common thing for a lot of people. And if it's not the, if it's not the beach, then like it's the mountains, right? Like something about going to these specific places seems to bring out a sense of calm or tranquility in people. And I think it has something to do with our five senses and like really grounding in there and using those to really engage with the seven types of rest, right? Like if you're at the beach, for an example, a lot of times you're on vacation, so you're getting some physical and mental rest. Um, you're getting to kind of like see and hear and feel and taste so many different things that are a little bit different than like your everyday, you know, routine. So I think that there's something to that, you know, and then we also know from so many different great resources that if you are feeling anxious, if you're having a moment of panic, you know, you can always dial into the five senses to kind of ground yourself in and kind of like calm. Um, and so I think there's something there, right? Like something about engaging our five senses, forcing us to be present in the moment, dialing into that seven types of rest. Um, and for me, I discovered that my most neglected sense is actually seeing, which sounds really weird, but I stare at computer screens for the most part all day. Um, and so I've been trying to flip the script on that and kind of take a few moments throughout the day to just look outside the window, see what's going on out there, look at the trees, look at the wildlife while I sip my coffee for five minutes. And it actually has made me more productive to take that time and actually just engage and rest. And it just brings about some calm to my day. So just something for you all to keep in mind um, as we move through these last few days of August. But as I've said before, we're all about what works for you here at Silk and Sonder. So if you are like, I don't know what you're talking about, none of this sounds like tranquility to me. That is totally fine. Whatever works for you and whatever brings you tranquility and peace and relaxation, keep focusing in on that in the next few days. If you're like me and you're like, yes, this is my jam. This has been kind of filling my cup too. Then we can continue to kind of pour into this as we move through the last few days of August here together. But we will do our last Tranquility Mind Map together. So for those of you who may be new, the Mind Map is something we do each week in the weekly setups to focus in on our theme. Um, so this is our last week with Tranquility. And this is something you would just do on a blank page. It's not anywhere in the journal. So even if you are in the September journal, you could just use a blank space um, or just a scratch piece of paper if you didn't want to put this in the September journal since it is a different theme. Um, but we're just going to continue to explore how we can embrace a sense of tranquility in our lives. Um, and this is our fifth weekend to focus on tranquility this month. And this week we are focusing on balance. So what things in your life do you need more of, less of? How could you address this need for balance? Um, and then this is in my tranquility mind map. And I do have the prompt at the top right of the page. So if you still need that, it's up there. It's on the screen. Um, balance was actually my word of the year for 2023. So and it, here it is sort of midway, a little more than midway through the year, but still sort of midway-ish through the year going, hey, hey, girl, remember me? Hey, I'm your theme. I'm your theme for the year. I'm balance. Um, so kind of just the universe checking in with me, it feels like. So again, what things you need? What things in your life do you need more of, less of? How could you address this need for balance? Um, for me, the reason that balance became my word of the year is I kind of had like a really big breakthrough in therapy towards the end of the year last year, where I kind of discovered that a lot of the struggle with my anxiety and inner monologue and different things was really coming from my inner child and her experience. 
Um, and basically her trying to be an adult when that's not her job. I am the adult. <laughs> um, so I need her to kind of relax and just hang out and be a kid. So for me, focusing in on balance means listening to my inner child and encouraging her to just be a child and, and not an adult. Um, remembering my word of the year, the why behind it and the intention, because it is balance for me. And then remembering that oftentimes we have to make our own balance. If we wait for others to make it for us, it might not happen and you can't pour from an empty cup. So for me, that looks like setting clear boundaries. You know, I've shared with you all, I started a new role at work and it's been going really great, but it's, it's just so different from what I was doing. Right. Like, and it's a salary position now. Right. So there's no hourly, like, Oh, well, you know, you can't work overtime. Like I'm the only person that can kind of stop me from working overtime. <laughs> So I'm having to really, you know, it's really great that this came up for me because I'm having to check back in with myself and say, yeah, I've got to set these boundaries. You know, I've got to make sure that I'm leaving on time. I'm making space for that work-life balance and in, in my home life as well, making sure that I'm making time for, you know, my partner and myself and family and friends, but always, always, always making sure that I'm making that self time, right? So whatever that looks like for you, maybe you need to carve out some you time because we can't pour from an empty cup. We can try, we can do it for a little while, but at some point your body is going to let you know, hey, I'm done. I don't have any more to give. And instead of choosing your rest day, your body will choose it for you. Mm -hmm, it will. I know. I know. Sometimes we think that we can go and go and go without any gas in the tank. And for a little while we can. But at some point, you're going to hit empty and your body will choose your rest day for you. And it's never at the most convenient time. So the best thing we can do is to schedule rest and balance for ourselves. And going back to those seven types of rest, right? Like that might mean creative rest. It might mean social rest, making time for the people that fill up your cup and not the other way around. So with all that said, I'm going to give you all a few minutes to sit with this. There's some quotes and things up on the screen to hopefully guide you a little bit. Um, and then we will get into our weekly setup for the week.
great job taking a few minutes with our last week of this tranquility mind map. Um, we are now going to move into our rosebud thorn activity. Um, so the rosebud thorn appears at the end of each week in your journal. Um, so this week's would be on page 50. Um, but if you're in the September journal, then it's like starting with the first week. So it wouldn't be on there, but that's okay. You can just do it on a scratch piece of paper or a blank space in the journal. Um, really, you can do a rosebud thorn anytime. It can be a great way to reflect on the day, um, the week, the month, etc. cetera. Um, but we do like to incorporate it at the end of each week to kind of just reflect on the last seven days, what went on, what happened, so that we can kind of start fresh with our next week in front of us. So a rose is a highlight, something that went well over the last seven days, something that made you smile uh, or maybe brought a sense of tranquility. Um, a bud is an emerging opportunity, and then a thorn is a challenge. So maybe something that didn't go super well, you know, maybe it was a little tough. Um, and I like to do mine in, more, in reverse. So my thorn for last week is we found out that um, one of our kitties has to go in for some testing in a few weeks. And um, we're really like positive and optimistic. Like the odds are definitely in our favor, but still it was like very stressful and unexpected. So that was probably my biggest thorn last week. Um, but last week was a very busy week for me. So <laughs> it was kind of hard to pick just one. And that's okay. Sometimes weeks are like that. Um, but I also had trouble picking a bud and a rose. So it just was like a big week full of a lot of things. Um, so my bud is that I had a meeting with a doctor about my hormones and thyroid, and it went absolutely amazing. It was very validating. I felt very listened to. Um, and it made me very emotional because it made me realize that for years I have been being a very good advocate for my health and I have been let down by a lot of professionals. Um, so it's nice to finally have a professional that is listening to me. So I feel very hopeful about that. I've got to go get some blood work done next week and we'll see what happens from there. So it's definitely an emerging opportunity because we're just getting started. And then my rose is that I'm starting to feel more confident in my new role at work and see the impact I'm making. You know, it is definitely very different, but, and it's what I was doing before was very measurable where this is not. So that's been a weird like switch for me, but I'm really starting to see it and feel it. And so it's starting to feel really good. So I'll give you all a few minutes to sit with your rose, bud, and thorn for last week. And then we will get started on that setup.
right. Thank you for taking a few minutes with this prompt. If you aren't sure what your rose is for the week, if it hasn't appeared to you yet, that's okay. Um, like Jennifer said, sometimes a rose or a bud can be as simple as it's a new day, it's a new week, um, or it could be that you're here with us and you made time for yourself today. Um, Rosebud and thorn is great because it kind of forces us to reflect back with some balance. So even in the toughest of weeks, we can try to find some good. And, he, and then also even in like weeks that are going really, really well, we kind of bring in that balance to ground us of like, yeah, but there's still this thing we need to work on, right? So always moving forward. So time for our main event. We are getting into the weekly setup. So if you are in your August journal, this is going to be pages 52 and 53. If you're in your September journal, it should be pages 26 and 27. Um, so we will start on page either 52 or 26, depending on which journal you are in. And we're going to start with the, this week, I, how I want to feel. So thinking about the next seven days, what you have going on, what's coming up, how you want to feel as you move through that week, or how you want to feel this time one week from now. Um, and as we go through these different sections, I will hop back and forth between the slides while you work in your journal. So if you get really attached to a particular slide, don't worry, I'll hop back over to it. So we have this little word cloud for some inspiration. And then here we have some actual examples from the journal. So um, I want to feel rested and ready. We are planning to go out of town later this week. And I just, I don't know what it is. I never can seem to like pack ahead of time. Anytime I've tried, it's made it worse because then it's like, I forget what I've already packed. <laughs> and so inevitably, anytime we go out of town, I always end up like super tired and kind of frazzled before we leave because I'm always scrambling to get it together. Um, so I'm trying to not do that this week, but I want to focus on being rested and ready for our trip. Um, so we'll give you a few minutes to think about how you want to feel moving into this week, and then we'll head into our next section. Okay, hopefully you landed on a word for your how I want to feel section. If not, if it hasn't come up for you yet, that's okay. Maybe as we move through these different sections, you'll realize it, or maybe you need to set up the whole week first and then come back to how I want to feel once you've had a chance to kind of look at everything. Whatever works best for you, for your journal and the setup is what we want you to do. So we are now going to move into 
our weekly to do's and major three goals. And so this is just the center part of the page, either on page 52 or 26 or both. If you're doing both, that's OK. Um, and the reason that we're doing them together is I know for some folks, they like to start with the to do's. And other folks like to start with the major three. So this way you can pick and choose which one you want to do. I also have started seeing people who have been combining the two. Um, so like choosing the major three goals and then correlating the to-dos to those major three goals and literally just drawing across the page like three sections. Um, so do whatever works best for you. For me, I have to start with the weekly to-dos and I use this section to kind of just look at my schedule for the week, look at what I have going on. I use that little mini calendar at the top and I shade in the days that I have like actual appointments and things that I have to do. Um, and then sometimes I'll just put little dots around the dates that I have like a reminder, like, hey, it's somebody's birthday or hey, you need to make this phone call. Um, but you can see for the 28th through the 31st, I have something every single day. Um, and so that really helps me to kind of narrow down what I have the bandwidth to focus on for this week. Um, and then if you have a super busy week, you could also consider using this Eisenhower matrix in the top left to kind of see what you might be able to get off of your plate, what you need to focus on. Um, so again, we'll move through all of these slides and I'll like hop back to each of them as we are going through. You could do a need, want, uh, hope list or a need, want, wish list. You can also try the Pomodoro technique. So if you're somebody that struggles with like executive function and you're like, Oh, I have so many things to do, but like getting started is the hardest part, right? I know that I struggle with that for sure. Um, so you could try the Pomodoro technique, which is where you set out to do a task and you make an agreement with yourself to work on it for 25 minutes. And then you set a timer like on your phone, microwave, the Alexa robot, if you have one of those Google home, whatever, set a 25 minute timer. And then when it goes off, you check in with yourself, look and see what you've gotten accomplished and then ask yourself, okay, do I have the bandwidth to work on this for another 25 minutes, or am I coming back to it tomorrow? Um, and then a lot of the times you'll find that you do have another 25 minutes because the hardest part is just getting started. So you could try the Pomodoro technique if you want. Um, there's also lots of good ideas here. Um, you can change it to a to-da list instead of a to-do list. So kind of flipping that mindset from look at everything I still need to do to look at everything I have accomplished. So writing things down as you get them done rather than what you need to do. Uh, we love a good bingo here at Silk and Sander. So whether you decide to do a bingo grid or a wheel or whatever that looks like for you, um, definitely use what works. Um, maybe you had like a trip coming up like me, or maybe you have like a birthday this week or something like that. So you could do a themed bingo around those tasks. You can try to diving into different areas of focus or routine. So like yourself, your family, your home, um, doing like a morning or evening routine. You can try to be less. And then of course, stickers and doodles are always welcome to. It can be a fun way for you to visualize your plans and goals. Um, and then for your major three, if you're struggling to think of three goals, you could try picking three things you can do this week that will support how you want to feel. Um, you can look at your to-dos and major threes as one section, like I mentioned earlier, and see if you can kind of marry those two together. You can choose goals that map to a personal challenge for the week, um, or you can pick just one or two goals, which is what I'm doing. I am getting ready for my trip, and I am getting sleep. I am focusing on getting ready and staying rested, and I am not putting a third goal on myself for my major three this week. So my major three is actually just my major two. So if you need it to be one thing, if you need it to be two things, that's fine, or if you need it to be four things, if you need to add an extra thing just for that focus and to like see that on the page, that is great. Um, so do whatever you need to. And of course, as always, you can skip this part and repurpose instead. It's always okay to skip or change things that don't work for you. And there are some ideas there on the screen. And then we have some more examples here. So again, dividing into different areas of focus, focusing in on actual goals, commitments, accountability. Um, setting intentions, or you can do like a stop list or a no list, things you don't want to do this week, right? Um, so I will give you all several minutes to go through these two sections, and I will be hopping between all of these slides as you work, um, and then we'll come back together and move into our next section. <music>
hopefully you figured out what your to-dos are for this week, or if you changed them to DAWs or however you decided to do that section, um, and that you also identified some major goals to look at, whether it was one, two, three, four, whatever works for you. Um, or if you repurpose both of those spaces completely, again, whatever works for you is what we want you to do. So we are now going to move into our last section here um, of this page. So either on page 52 or 26, the habit and activity section. Um, so you could set a goal or intention of how many times or when you want to track or don't and just track it when it happens. That's what the little goal section is for here. So you would write out a particular activity or habit. And then if you're like, I want to try to do this three times a week, you could go ahead and set that intention or goal. Or if you just want to track it and kind of see what happens, see when you're able to get to it, how often you get to it, you can leave that goal section completely blank. Um, sometimes if you're pairing this with other things like, you know, a sleep tracker or your other habit tracker, you can kind of see like, huh, on the days that I, you know, actually got up and did my morning routine, I had the ability to hit this goal more often. And so maybe that's telling you like, hey, you should definitely make that routine a priority because it gives you more energy. Um, so sometimes this can be a good place for some insight. Again, you can choose to fill in every line just a few lines or add more if you need to. Um, you can say no thanks and use this section to like put stickers here or just put a quote, like you could just say no thank you to this habit section altogether. Um, and then you could track how much you do of something if you want, like um, how much water you're getting, how many steps you're taking, um, or you can change it to a no list, like no nail biting, no alcohol, um, saying no, those kinds of things, right? Um, for me, I'm focusing on bedtime routine here. Again, just focusing in on trying to get rest and stay rested this week before we leave. So really focusing in on that wash face, loss, brush, mouthwash, and medicine. Um, I try to do that every night anyway, but being able to actually like check it off each day gives me a sense of satisfaction. So that's what I am doing there. Um, and for those of you who may be new, I'm sure you noticed that there is a habit wheel at the front of your journal um, that's for the entire month. So typically what we recommend is on your habit wheel, you want to try to focus in on something you want to do each and every day of the month. So those truly like daily habits that you want to track. Um, but then this section could be maybe something you just want to focus on for the week, or maybe it's like a place for a stretch goal. If one of your daily habits was to walk 5,000 steps a day, if that's going really well, maybe three days this week, you want to shoot for 7,000, just for an example. Um, and again, it's a habit and activity tracker, not a habit and activity to-do list. So just because you put something here doesn't mean that you have to do it. It doesn't have to become another thing to do. If it starts to feel like that, I would encourage you to embrace the sticker idea and just say no thank you because um, it shouldn't be stressful. Um, your journal should always be a tool for you, not adding to like your stress. Because um, sometimes seeing what habits and activities we don't do can also be really insightful. So that's why we like to focus on it being a tracker. Um, and then I have some fun little graphics here to maybe give you some more ideas and inspiration um, for your little section here. And then we, I'll give you a few minutes to look at this and then we will move into our next page.
All right. Hopefully you found some fun things to track or things to focus on here in this section. Um, I did see the 54321 came up in the chat. So basically you do like you actually assign a goal. And so you do 54321 in the goal spot. So something you want to do five times a week, something you just want to do four times, three times, et cetera. And then something that you just want to do one time. And so sometimes like having something that you just want to do one time. If you just get that checked off the list, it kind of creates momentum to do the other things. Um, so that's the five, four, three, two, one thing. Anyways, so we will now move on to our next page. So page 53 or 27, depending on which journal you're in or both journals, starting with our meal plan section. So this is a section that gets repurposed a lot. Um, so feel free to make it your own and also feel free to use it as an actual meal plan. We do have people that actually use it as intended, believe it or not, um, or it gets kind of tweaked a little bit. Like maybe it's not a meal plan. It might be like a meal tracker um, or like meal intentions, meal ideas, meal brainstorm, right? So for a lot of folks, it still stays kind of in that meal category. Um, but you can also change this up to like daily affirmations or nightly reflections. The GLAD acronym is really popular for folks to use. So it stands for gratitude, learning, accomplishment, and delight. And it's there in the top of the screen. So something you're grateful for each day, something you learned, something you accomplished, and something that brought you delight. Um, somebody turned theirs into the seven types of rest and sort of things to just sort of focus in on, ideas that they could pull from if they need something in a particular area. Because with the seven types of rest, you may find that you don't necessarily need social rest. Maybe you're really good at getting social rest and that's not something you need to focus on, but maybe you're really bad at making space for sensory rest. And so having sort of this idea bank you could pull from and say, ooh, I need sensory rest. I really think I need that. Ooh, I could light a candle or I could do this might help to can kind of give you some inspiration through the week. Um, I'm using mine as my trip to do's, just, you know, all those last minute little things that come up, like making sure that I have enough medication for while we're gone and making sure that, you know, the cats have enough cat food and litter and all those things that I've handed off the keys to the people that are going to watch the cats. So that's what I'm going to use my section for this week. Um, but here are some other ideas. You could use this as an actual schedule. I uh, kind of like how somebody did that on the left because it does have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, through it. You could use it as an area to tidy up. Um, you could do workouts and wellness write one thing you want to let go of, focus on a word of the day here or like Wordle or something fun like that. Um, or again, you can do a different kind of affirmation. So this person did, I am, I can, I will, I do. So I'll give you just a few moments to look at this and then we'll move into our last few sections. <laughs>
All right. So hopefully you found how to best use this space for you. We are now going to move into our last few sections here. So still on page 53 and 27, depending on which journal you're in. And we're going to go into our mind body health plan. And then we're also going to look at the shopping list as well. Um, so with the mind body health plan, you can definitely use this as a space to set intentions for focusing on those areas for the week. I like the two examples in the top left where they sort of set out specific things to do during the week or the second person actually divided theirs into mind, body and health. Um, but both of these folks for Saturday and Sunday decided to kind of carve out a rest period for reset or relax. Um, and I really love that. I think it ties in really nicely with the balance focus we had earlier today. Um, you could use this as a weekly check-in with yourself or checking in with friends and family, maybe making those phone calls, sending those messages, that sort of thing. If you need that reminder, I know that I do because life gets really busy. Um, you can, again, look at those seven types of rest in this section if you like. Um, you can set daily intentions with like the alliteration, which is really fun, like Motivational Monday, Transformation Tuesday, et cetera. You could do a simple key chart of what you feel and what you need. For me, I'm doing like a little bingo here. I've been doing that for the last month or so, and I've used this section more than I ever have. So I'm going to keep up with that. Um, but here are some more examples of what to do in this space. You could do um, plant care like this one person did, kind of create like a four quadrant grid of things that like fill up your cup. So for them, it was create, write, read, and think. Um, write down one thing you did for yourself each day or put a sticker or a quote in this section um, if that speaks to you. The person in the very top right made like a whole legend, like a whole grid of like what their little symbols meant. And so they were doing like symbols each day, which is super fun. Um, and then for the shopping list, I use this as intended. It actually is a shopping list for me. If I don't write it down, I either forget to buy it or I impulse buy because I'm afraid I'll forget to buy it. Um, but this could be a different bingo section for you. It could do self-care bingo, ta-da bingo. Um, somebody decided to use this for their sort of intentions and in that alliteration. So Mother Nature Monday, Tech Free Tuesday, et cetera. Um, again, always a, friend, a fan of stickers and quotes and things in this section, if that helps to brighten up your planner and make you smile. Um, and then the calmness scale. So somebody decided to their word of the week for how they wanted to feel was calm. And then they decided they wanted to sort of track that feeling each day. So maybe tying that back into your how you want to feel section as well, if that speaks to you. Um, but I will give you a few moments with each of these sections, and then we'll close out our time together.
right. I hope that you decided to do something with your mind body health plan and that you're either using your shopping list for shopping or something else that will help you through the week. Um, the last section that we have is the I am loving section. Um, and if you just want to drop something in the chat real quick of what you're loving currently or what you wrote down in this section, I know a lot of folks like to wait till the end of the week to fill this out. Um, for me, I'm just loving time with our kitties. We're all we're getting ready to go out of town. And so I always like extra time with them before we leave. Um, but you can see there's lots of different great things up here on the screen. Um, and with that, that will actually wrap up our weekly setup today. I know it always goes by so fast. Um, but we would love it if you would share how you decided to set up your planner and everything in Sonder Club. Um, if you haven't signed up for it yet, um, you can use that bar to the right QR code there to see what's new in the app and get signed up in there. If there were any pages that you were like, man, this was really awesome and I got really good ideas, but I want more or, oh, there was some pages that I hope we would go over, but we didn't. You can definitely go into Sonder Club, look for inspiration there, ask folks for inspiration and also find the Sonder social schedule that might go over the page that you're looking for. Um, as always, we're still doing the refer a friend program too. So if you refer somebody to Silk and Sonder, you get $10 off, they get $10 off. And then if you are currently um, subscribed to a monthly subscription with Silk and Sonder, you could potentially save up to $110 a year by switching over to an annual subscription. So something to think about, I know for me about three months into Silk and Sonder, I knew that I was definitely keeping it for a year. Um, and I would say about six months in, I knew that I was never getting rid of it. So if that's you, if you've already like reached that point in your journey and you're ready to commit, you could save yourself a little bit of cash by going ahead and moving over to that annual subscription. And finally, Jennifer is going to be popping our YouTube link in the chat. So this YouTube link is not searchable. If you search Silk and Sonder on YouTube or Silk and Sonder on Google and YouTube, it's going to pull up a totally different page. Um, so this is a link that you will want to save, bookmark, keep. All of our Sonder socials get recorded and within a few days they'll be up at that link. So if you ever need to go back and listen to one because you were a little late or you had to leave early, um, or you missed something and just want to sit with it again, or if you just weren't able to attend it all because of schedules, you can always catch up on um, the YouTube link and catch it there. Um, and then this was our playlist today on the far right hand side. Feel free to snap that QR code, take the link. I'll share the link in the chat as well as we close out. Um, I do eventually cycle out all of my themed playlists. So um, I've also shared my master list there because once this one gets cycled out, all of the songs will get dumped into my master list. But feel free to listen to it. Feel free to make your own playlist, whatever brings you joy. It was my sincere pleasure to be with you all today. And until next time, be good to each other and we'll see you all in Sonder Club. dream